Removing the radiator in your V6 4th Gen 4Runner or 2nd Gen Tacoma is one of the easier jobs you can do at home. You want to start by popping the hood and removing these pesky little plastic tabs that hold the plastic cover on. Remove and save your radiator cap and the overflow coolant hose. There are three bolts holding your coolant overflow reservoir in place. Take those out and remove the reservoir. On the bottom driver side of the radiator is a coolant drain plug. You'll want to remove this completely to drain the coolant. While the coolant is draining, remove the plastic engine cover. On the driver side of the radiator, there are three cooling hoses. Two smaller ones for the transmission and one larger hose for the engine coolant. Take care when removing the two smaller hoses. A couple drops are fine, but you don't want to lose transmission fluid in this process. If everything is completely stock, you'll have spring style hose clamps that you grab with pliers. I'm not a fan of those, so I replaced all of mine with the screw style hose clamp. On the passenger side of the radiator, you have just one larger hose to remove. With the hoses pulled from the radiator, you can remove the fan shroud. There's one bolt on each side and two tabs that hold it at the bottom. With the fan shroud loose, you can remove the four bolts that hold the radiator in place. The two upper bolts are fairly easy to manage. The two lower ones are a little more tricky. You'll need an extension to get to the lower bolts through this access hole. It's normal to struggle a bit to find the bolt head, but just feel around, you'll find it. Here's me struggling after dropping the bolt inside the access hole. Remove the radiator and pull the rubber bushings out of the mounting holes. You'll want to use these on the new radiator. Three of these bushings are identical, but the top driver side bushing has a hook to assist with positioning the radiator. After installing the new radiator, it's time to refill your coolant. After you fill your radiator with coolant, turn the engine and the heater on. Then go back out and watch your coolant levels at the top of the radiator. When the engine heats up, the thermostat will open and the coolant will be allowed to pass through the engine. At this point, you will immediately want to start filling your coolant again. These bubbles are air pockets escaping the coolant system. Continue to monitor the coolant levels and when you're confident there are no more bubbles or drops in fluid level, you can replace the radiator cap and fill your overflow reservoir. It's best but not entirely necessary to do this refill and burp process on a hill to get your radiator cap higher than your heater core. That will allow the air in your heater core to escape easier. It's good practice to double check your bolts and your fluid level after driving. With all those steps complete, congratulations and change your radiator. Be sure to like, smash that subscribe, and thank you all so much for stopping by Dylan's Garage. See you on the next one.